Mistakes were made. I like books. I have so many piles of books around me, guys, and this is just part one of two book hauls. I bought so many books. To be fair, over the last seven or eight months, a lot of these books go back to August. However, I should have made some book hauls before now because I have so many books to show you guys now that I have to split it into two parts. So this first part will be all the fantasy and science fiction books. There's a lot of amazing books here that I'm really excited to talk to you guys about. Let's just get started. And first of all, we're gonna start with digital books, so audiobooks and ebooks, because they are real books, guys. The only audiobook I really have to talk about is Lux. This is a Reckoners novel. Reckoners is a series by Brandon Sanderson, and this book got released just as an audiobook. I just jumped on it and I got it because I have read the Reckoners trilogy and I really, really enjoy it. It's a kind of a YA science fiction slash fantasy series by Sanderson. Sticking with Sanderson, I have two ebooks to talk about, Sunreach and Defending Elysium, part of the Skyward series. And these kind of extra novellas were co-written by Sanderson and some other people. I've heard mixed things about these novellas. Some of them are better than others, but I have yet to read them because I need to read the second book in the Skyward trilogy first. The Binti Collection by Nnedi Okorafor. This is a science fiction series and I I just decided to get the whole series in this sort of bind up collection and I've already read one of the short stories in it and I think I have at least two more novellas to go through so I'm very excited to get to them. Next up the book I'm actually currently reading this is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry and this is a new release that's been actually really really hyped especially on Twitter. This book kind of blew up because it's essentially a cozy fantasy story about an orc who is done with adventuring, she's done with killing and looting, and she just wants to settle down and open her own coffee shop. Then I have a progression fantasy called The Land Founding by Aleron Kong. Progression fantasy is kind of the same thing as lit RPG, or I've also heard it being called um, cultivation fantasy, I think, which is essentially a subgenre of fantasy where there's actual leveling up and stat progression throughout the game, so the character gets stronger and stronger and you can like see a lot of the stats. So it's essentially a RPG game, but in book form. I'm probably gonna make a video like trying out this genre just because I don't know it sounds interesting I love RPG video games so I'm really curious if I'm going to like that sort of blend of literature and like RPG video gaming and the rest of the ebooks that I have to talk about are actually all SPFBO finalists which is Mark Lawrence's sort of self-published fantasy competition that takes place every year and yeah it's quite big I'll, I'll put a link to Mark Lawrence's blog down in the description if you're curious but uh, these are all really really good self-published fantasy books essentially so I've picked some of them up both on ebook and physically because one of my goals is to just generally read more self-published fiction especially self-published fantasy. Fortune's Fool by Angela Board. This is one of the most sort of popular self-published fantasy series out there but I don't really know much about it. I don't really want to. I just kind of want to go into it and see what I think. The Iron Crown by L.L. L. Macri. Voice of War by Zach Argyle. I know this kind of focuses more on sort of family dynamics and um, the baby of the main couple is the chosen one, but uh, he can't be the chosen one if he doesn't survive. So it's essentially the parents trying to keep the chosen one alive. Paternus by Dirk Ashton. I think this is kind of sort of a maybe urban fantasy monster slaying kind of deal, not entirely sure. And then Last Memoria by Rachel Emma Shaw. I think maybe this is more historical fantasy. Again, I might be slightly off with the premises on these, but these are all winners of SPFBO, SPFBO. I'm sure they must be good, so I don't really care about not knowing much about them going into them. I just want to experience them and see what I think. Let's move on to the physical pile. And what a pile it is. I don't I don't know where to start. Okay, let's continue with the indie books. Okay, let's start with one I've actually already read and absolutely loved. I'll probably do a video talking more in depth about it, but this is Shadow of a Dead God by Patrick Samfire. And I really, really like this cover. I read this recently and absolutely loved it. This is essentially a 
in my opinion, okay, a better version of the Dresden Files. This was so funny. I can't count the number of times this book made me laugh aloud. So it's essentially sort of an urban fantasy mystery novel. So the main character is a, a struggling sort of detective um, and he's trying to figure out the mystery of some of these ghosts that are supposedly haunting a person's house. If you like Dresden Files, I think you will like this. And if you didn't like the Dresden Files, at least if you didn't like the first book, I think you will really like this because I read the first book in the Dresden Files and I wasn't that impressed. I loved this though, so definitely check this one out. Next up, I have a doorstopper. <laughs> this is Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson. And just look at just the size of this. It's great. I love, I love me some big fat fantasy books. And this is the definition of a BFFB, big fat fantasy book. I started seeing this a lot on Twitter and I also heard about it from Patrick's channel and it's just supposed to be a really epic sort of Song of Ice and Fire like fantasy series and this is just the first book but I'm really excited to get into this at some point. I'm not sure when I'll start it but um, I'll definitely try to make it a priority so I can get up a review for you guys if you're interested. So I already talked a bit about progression slash lit RPG fantasy. This is another one. This is Unsold, the first book in the Cradle series by Will White. This is like kind of a ridiculously popular self-published fantasy series and it's also quite short. So again this will probably be in a video where I try out lit RPG fantasy book. So if you're curious about that, definitely make sure to subscribe and wait for that video. Another <laughs> big fat fantasy book. This is really heavy. Look at this. This is Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer. And once again, big boy, big thick boy. All I know about this is that it's supposed to be more classic style fantasy. So sort of the chosen one kind of trope. And I'm pretty sure it follows young main character that goes to a magic school. So that's sort of trope and honestly that sounds awesome. Big fat fantasy book to really just stick your teeth into and have a good time. Okay and the last indie book I have is Ascendant by Michael R. Miller and again this is a beautiful cover. There's a blind dragon on it. All I know about this is that the main character finds a dragon egg and the dragon that spawns from this egg is blind. Let's do a really quick sci-fi section because I only have two sci-fi books. The first one is The Legion Collection by Brandon Samson, The Many Lives of Stephen Leeds. So this is a bind up of the three Legion novellas. I had already read the first two on Kindle a while back and I finished the series with the last novella from this bind up. I love this trilogy. Honestly, it's one of my favorite things that Sanderson has written and well, he's written a lot. He's written a lot. I've written five extra novels in the last two years. So this is a sort of mystery story about kind of a Sherlock Holmes type character who has a multiple personality disorder where he creates multiple personalities and each of these people are, are real people to him. Each of these personalities is very skilled in one specific thing and so with all of these people the main character helps solve crimes. And then the other science fiction novel was actually sent by the author, so I had a little nice chat with the author about this book, and this is Stormblood by Jeremy Saul. Another really, really cool cover in my opinion. It says, Saul's debut is an absolute must read for fans of gritty, action-packed detective and military science fiction. Now, that's not usually something I read a lot of, but another thing is I really do want to get more into science fiction and read more science fiction. And so when the author contacted me about his book, I just was like, yes, please, I want to read it and I will, and I'll let you know what I think of it. There's still so many more books, guys. Let's do a bit of classic fantasy next. The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. I really don't know anything about this except that it's very sort of classic fantasy and it's a lot of fantasy authors favorite books. It's a book that they learned a lot from on how to write fantasy. So that's why I picked this up and I really don't know much more about it than that. Then I have another bind up and this is a bind up of the first four books in the Earthsea uh, series by Ursula K. Le Guin. I think this is in the magical school trope if I'm not mistaken. Again what a lot of more modern fantasy writers have been inspired by. And the other classic fantasy I have is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. This is the fourth book in the Wheel of Time series. This is actually a 
Well, as you can see, this is a used copy. I recently put out a video where I read the first book in the Wheel of Time. It's very hard to find the editions that I want of this series, which is why I went with a used copy. Not very happy about the condition of this, so I'll have to see how to replace it down the line. I'll definitely read from it though. I only have one, two, three, four YA fantasy that I've picked up. The first one is Ninth House by Lee Bordugo. Lee Bordugo is the author of Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone universe. I really love the Six of Crows film and this is one of her newer books. It's the first book in another duology and from what I know it's supposed to be kind of a dark academia fantasy novel so maybe again a magical school but I'm not entirely sure actually. City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. So this is actually, well it's actually a middle grade novel, it's not YA. I really want to read Victoria Schwab or V. Schwab but I decided to start with this one just because it's short and quick and I want to read generally more middle grade as well so I thought why not combine two things that I want to read more of Victoria Schwab and Middle Grade. I know nothing about it except there's a, a cat on the cover, maybe a ghost cat. This Poison Heart by Callan Bayron. I really wanted this book because again first of all the cover is really, really cool. I know there's a cat on the roof. Ghost cats, roof cats, all kinds of cats. So the, sorry, the magic system in this from what I know is all about plant magic but I think her main character moves to an aunt's house and this house is very magical and there's some kind of plant magic involved and magical gardens. The last YA fantasy is one I've already read and this is The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. So this is the second book in the Sholomance trilogy by her. I talked about this in the worst books that I read in 2021 because unfortunately I did not like this. Pick it up at your own risk. Really quickly, I completed my Mad Ship, not Mad Ship, Live Ship Traders trilogy with the second and third book, The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb, of course. This is the second book and the final book is Ship of Destiny. This is her second trilogy and the realm of the elderlings and really, really excited to finish this trilogy because I absolutely loved the first book. So now I have the entire thing to stick my teeth into because once again, thick boys. I actually have two Mark Lawrence. I have not read Mark Lawrence, but now I can because I have two starters to two of his series. So the first one I have is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, which all I know about is is kind of supposed to be like Arya Stark's story. So I think she's supposed to be like kind of an assassin nun. If you've read A Song of Ice and Fire or watched Game of Thrones, then that part of Arya's storyline, this is supposed to be inspired by. And the other one I have is Prince of Thorns. This is the first book in the Broken Empire trilogy by him. And in general, Mark Lawrence is supposed to be a really, really good fantasy author. He's one I have yet to read. So now I have two <laughs> beginnings of the series. Another little mass market paperback is The Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. This is the first book in the Queens of Renthia series. And uh, again, I don't know much about this, but I think this is supposed to be more, uh, not necessarily YA, but maybe has a bit more of a YA tone. I think it follows a younger protagonist. I'm trying to group these into themes. So the next little theme is books about books. So the first one I have, The Library of the Dead by T.L. It says Ropa dropped out of school to become a ghost walker and Edinburgh's dead sure do love to chat. That's all I'll read because that's all I need. <laughs> kind of rhymed. Okay, and the other book about books is The Binding by Bridget Collins. I heard about this from Yolene's channel. I'll put a link to her channel down below. I really, really like her videos um, and she really liked this book and I'd never heard about it before, but it just sounded like something I might enjoy. It says Emmett Farmer is the binder's apprentice. His job is to handcraft beautiful books and within each to capture something unique and extraordinary a memory. If you have something you want to forget or a secret to hide, he can bind it and you will never have to remember the pain it caused. Foundryside by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the first book in the Founders trilogy. I have not actually heard a lot about this series, but I know a lot of authors talk about this series being one of their favorite series of, of books, so I really want to give it a try. I think it's also more of an urban fantasy, just even judging by the cover. It says in the city of Tevanet, you either have every 
everything or nothing, for escaped slave Sancho Grado, eking out a precarious living in the hellhole known as the commons, nothing is just one misstep away. So when she is offered a lucrative job to steal an ancient artifact from a heavily guarded warehouse, she leaps at the chance. Definitely another urban fantasy, but I'm definitely getting more into urban fantasy these days, so I think I will enjoy this. A beautiful cover, The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Just look at this. This is the first book in the Dyn Dandelion Dynasty fantasy series and it's, from what I know, Asian-inspired fantasy. It says a willy charismatic bandit and the vengeance-sworn son of a deposed duke cross paths as they each lead their own rebellion against the emperor's brutal regime. Together they will journey to the heart of the empire, witnessing the clash of armies, fleets of silk-draped airships, magical books and shapeshift thing gods. Another doorstopper. We seem to be having quite a lot of these in this book haul. This is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks, the first book in the... Oh, what is the series called? Lightbringer, I think? Yes, the Lightbringer series. Yeah, so this is just one of these fantasy series that I've always wanted to read but just never picked up the first book up. So finally, I finally decided to do it. And I think there are six books in total and yeah, they are all bricks but um that that's never a bad thing so all i know is that the magic system in this world is supposed to be really cool and yeah based on like prism magic light magic colors you can tell i know a lot about it well i'll find out i will find out the Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. Also Asian-inspired fantasy. I think this magic system involves, well, bone shards of fallen dragons? When the emperor refuses to recognize his daughter as heir to the throne, she vows to prove her worth by mastering the forbidden art of bone shard magic. Yet such magic carries a deadly cost. And then I have another, actually another hype book of the last couple of years, The Mask of Mirrors by M. A. Carrick and I'm pretty sure this is a author duo, and I think one of them is Marie Brennan. As corrupt nightmare magic begins to weave its way through the city of dreams, the poisonous feuds of its nobility and the shadowy dangers of its impoverished underbelly become tangled. A dazzling and darkly magical fantasy adventures by Marie Brennan and Alec Helms, writing together as M.A. Carrick. Okay, th there it is. I'm not crazy. My god, this has been the longest book haul I have ever done, and it's only the first part. The last book in this book haul, I really need to make book hauls more often. This is my wake up call to film more book hauls so that this never happens again because this is too, it's too much. The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynne. And this is John Gwynne's newest trilogy. I have not read Malice yet, the first book in his first trilogy. And this is more Norse. Well, I think Malice is also Norse inspired, but I think this is supposed to be the most Norse inspired fantasy he's written and this cover is just fantastic like massive dragon tiny human but uh, I'm not sure which one I will start with. Ideally I would love to start in publication order so reading The Fateful and the Fallen first although this speaks to me a little more to be honest than The Fateful and the Fallen so if you've read both of these or you know this one and The Fateful and the Fallen let me know what you think I should start with. Whew, we have made it. These were all the fantasy and science fiction books I picked up over the last seven, eight months. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these fantastic sounding and looking books. I'm just so excited about everything. Like every single book just sounds so amazing. But let me know if there's anything you especially want me to read and review sooner rather than later. Otherwise, let me know if you've picked up any of these books before. If you've read them, let me know what you think of them. And yeah, as always, links in the description to all of the books. Especially check out all the indie books that I mentioned in this video if any of them sound interesting to you. And otherwise, yeah, just let me know what is the what is the newest book that you've bought that you're really excited to start reading? I will link the next part of the book haul here and that will cover all the books that are not science fiction or fantasy, but uh, that'll probably come out after this video, but it will be here once it's out. Check out some of my other recent videos here. So I'll think I'll put my review of uh, The Eye of the World, the first book and the Wheel of Time series down there. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye.